welcome to Joyful Guitars. My name is Chris. We got Matt over here. Uh, on, on this side of the camera. On this yeah. side of the camera. <laughs> and we're doing something a little different. Me and Matt have a kind of... still need to do a thumbs up <laughs> for, for <laughs> continuity. <laughs> We've been kind of like throwing around, like, what can we do to kind of... Uh, I don't feel like we're in a rut. I'm loving our content we're putting out right oh, now. Yeah. But I wanted to do find something else that we can do to, to give you guys a little bit of a pull back the curtain. Well, and it's a Friday, too. Like, I don't know. Yeah. We, yeah. We've got, we're going to probably have a short day. I've got a gig later that yes. i got to get to. So, yeah. This is just... Um, yes. This is content that's fun to make and something different for us yeah. to try and something different for you guys to watch and appreciate and, hopefully and a little two birds because a lot of people uh always ask me questions in the comment section about like well why doesn't the fa why don't the a factory guitar don't do that technique that you're showing us yeah. and so what i'm hoping to do here uh, because i haven't watched this matt hasn't watched this video either is to give you guys some of my commentary as we go on a tour together yeah. of the factory uh, uh, of Taylor Guitars, and um, I don't know. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who is it that does this, Matt? Uh, casino Guitars. Yeah, this is uh, Casino Guitars. Did this. We couldn't find a um, good video from Taylor specifically to put out there, so we found this one, scrolled through it real quick. We think it's going to be good, and uh, which is kind of nice because it's not going to be curated by Taylor, which will be nice. So let's see what we get. Let's get... So it looks like we're going to be in the El Cajon uh, factory, not the Mexico Okay, so this one. is where so, the guitar nice. starts. Jonathan, we were just hanging out with Serge, and he was talking about these are the wood blanks for the Nicks. Yes. It's all mahogany, chopping mahogany from all Fiji. the... Fiji. Fiji. They call each other about the Western shirt. Um, <laughs> 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 is there a corporate memo? For up to a few weeks sometimes, glasses will be gone. Matt's got a hell of a Western shirt collection. And when they finish with them, they have to get all the moisture out of them. Love a good them inside, dry them a little bit more. But they say there's buckets of water that come out of these guys when they're done. If you look around us, they're moving wood all day, all morning. So all it's pretty exciting, actually. That's one of my parts. favorite parts. Yeah. But I'm a weirdo. Next. Next. Okay, so right now we're in what they call the laser room and the exotic woods room. So this is where we Wonder just finished picking out some custom <laughs> <and Andy Powers, laughs> some wood sets that we're going to turn into some beautiful guitars. Yeah. And, um, Man, the myth, the legend, Andy oh, Powers. Andy Powers. Yeah. I'm this sure he's... the magic happens. I'm sure Andy is always just on the factory floor too, like making guitars. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. It's a real hands on thing. It's him and Bob, like making sawdust. Uh -huh. every day. You have all the exotic <laughs> wood sets are all around us, all over there, all over here. There's Ash Blanks behind me. That's There's the incredible. carousel yeah. of guitar making right behind the camera, too, which we're going to show in a second. That's where they put the pieces together. We've chosen the tops. And okay, so, what is that right there? What, what are we so looking like, at? So, like, I think that what we're seeing here. I see the, the, the two. Uh, uh, the tops being joined. Yeah, so yeah. it's like a plate joining jig that's on like a rotisserie. So oh, the, that's the carousel he was talking about. Yeah, oh, and cool. so he can like clamp the two top plates together, uh, like we've done before. Yeah, and uh, and then just rotate it and rotate it and rotate it because like that's always like a big hang up in uh, any guitar building on, on a small scale is glue drying time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's nice. So it's, and you can see it's pushing it together on the outside. Dude, there, it's like then... super homemade. Those are just friggin' bar clamps. Listen, yeah, I, I get off on this. Um, there's a, whenever I was in college, a, a big part of mechanical engineering is like, you know, the people that make the machines inside uh, the factories. And it's it's such a cool, it's an art form, you know? You um, can tell, though, this was a machine that has been repurposed because it's totally uh, what will work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, those absolutely. are like clearly like Home Depot <laughs> F bar clamps. Yeah. Super cool. I love cool. that. Yeah. So we can get a little bit solid. We got the laser room right over here behind us as well. So this is really one of the more important cooking rooms of Taylor Guitars. We're excited. Serge, is this the room? <laughs> I mean, Zach hasn't put out a song in years. So that's where he's been hiding out. What's happening? So this, once that wood has acclimated outside, they bring it in here, and this is where they start to actually cut the wood into pieces the builders can use. So they get it smooth, they get it uh, uniform, so all the dimensions are right, and then it's going to start going out to the different parts of the factory where they can actually start shaping the parts of the guitars. Neck blanks, like, like what's behind us. So that's it, too. Like, like a big chunk of what they're doing there is it takes up so much time. It's just like um, dimensioning lumber. Yeah. You know, you get all this raw Processing. lumber in, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just like getting it to the point, especially... I haven't seen this once again, but I know that Taylor uses a lot of CNC. So, like with CNC, um, if in order to make the CNC machine as quick as possible, it needs to, you need to have the exact same size piece of wood to go onto the machine each time. So, right. I guarantee, yeah, that's somebody's job all day is just to friggin' 
feed lumber into it like a giant belt sander and just get it to you know one and a quarter inches or whatever. It's 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 the not sexy part no. of making guitars, yes. but yeah, very necessary. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're just separating neck blanks right now. Yes, that's awesome. Very cool. And I know over there are the four ovens they use to kind of get these more acclimated, wow. some of the moisture out yes. as well. So we'll walk over there next. Cool. Fantastic. So they're using um, scarf joint necks there. Mm -hmm. Those aren't so like... Here's where the actual neck meets the headstock for the first time ever. I think that's adorable. And you'll see those... Uh, oh, that pushed wrong button? Yeah, you, I think you hit mute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you'll see on those necks, uh, those are scarf jointed, so I make my necks all one piece. Those are smaller pieces so that they can do the headstock and the, the neck, uh, and then they'll stack wood to make the heel. Um, it's more cost effective. It doesn't make as strong of a neck. Um, it's more cost effective mm -hmm. because you can buy just thinner lumber. Um, it's more available. But the cool thing is if you look on those heads, the back of that, where the headstock is going to be, those little holes, those are going to be indexing holes for either the CNC machines or something. There's going to be, a, yeah. there'll be some sort of jig. Anytime you, as we go through here and you see um, anything like that, those are going to be for alignment, aligning of things. A little bit. But um, I love it. It's just this is the beginning of your guitar neck. That's it. It's just there. A couple rectangles put together. You can see they're all glued up there. It's pretty cool. I mean, that's, uh, you know, maybe that's 40. Kind of up a bit what? Too, like, so what? Just, um, I know we keep pausing, but look at that. I think that that's, these a, that's are another, all, another carousel kind of thing. Yep. And, I, and I, these are all uh, pneumatic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, activated as a clamping. So a scarf joint headstock is difficult to, to glue up you end up with like this weird, um, getting that angle of that piece of wood. When you clamp it at the top, one, the headstock piece wants to slide off. Yeah. We've never, Matt's never seen us do a scarf because I, I stopped doing scarf joints like quickly because I hated them. <laughs> but, but so like they You solved, can see how there'd be some logistical yeah. challenges to it. So like, they've yeah. solved that here. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven guitars per row. Yeah. Uh, super cool. And then let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, there must be 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I read somewhere months ago that Taylor does, uh, this was an old article, that Taylor does like 650 guitars a day, like out the door. Wow. So, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> you need rotisseries for that. Mm -hmm. So right here, we've got a little pile of necks with the scarf joints. So the Taylor necks, they're, they're two pieces right here. They're glued yeah, together. Really There's a couple scarf. reasons mm -hmm. Taylor has chosen to do it that way. One of the big things is it's more stable. It's actually stronger than if it was just one one piece of wood with that, that neck angle. Okay, let's talk about that for a second because... I don't know how I feel about it. So, a good glue joint... I always say a good glue joint is stronger than the piece of wood that was originally there. Sure, sure. I think that this is BS. I, don't, I think it's... I would rather have a solid neck, one piece of neck, because that wood is all going to move and shift together at the same time. Um, and if you do get a break on the headstock, if the guitar falls down, it's going to break on the fibers of the wood. Right. It's going to allow me to do a better repair. I think that this is a bunch of BS that the factories tell us because they can get their wood cheaper. Uh, and <laughs> If you think about it, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. These factory-made guitars are notorious for, like, needing to do a technique to make manufacturing quicker mm -hmm. and sometimes better, yeah. right? But then they'll tell you that the reason why they did it is because it makes the guitar sound better. And well, it's and like... Historically, it's, in guitar making, it, it's, uh, you know, um, it's always the accountants or the, the marketing guys that, you know, it. that... And sorry to any uh, accountants or marketing people out there that are watching this, like, you, you're, you're wonderful, you serve a beautiful purpose, except uh, historically, you've not been good for the integrity exactly. of guitar making. Well, and everybody, we've all seen it, right? We've all seen it. Like, everybody talks about... And I'm not, this isn't going to be a bash on Taylor video, but yeah. we're watching a Taylor video. Uh, like, everybody knows that... The, the, there was a really good era of Taylor guitars, and that's when Bob was still doing it all, mm. like back in the 90s, early 2000s, and now it's, you know, Bob's taking a back seat, doing more of the money side, and it's become, it's becoming more uh, corporate, just mm -hmm. like Martin, and that's how you end up getting guitars like the, the, the Triple O X2 that we just reviewed, and it was made yeah. out of plastic, and, uh, and, and that's how it suddenly starts to make a turn, but this goes to the conversation that we had about the bridge pins, because some people were like, well, if it's so good, why don't Taylor and, and Martin do it? Well, it's because it affected the speed of product of production. Mm -hmm. And speed and time is money. And, and so they stopped doing it and they started slotting the pins. Sure. And, and then, but people see it and they go, they listen to what the factors are telling them, which is like the scarf joint is better. Yeah. And we haven't even finished this little clip yet, but <laughs> I don't. 
It's okay I, to be skeptical, I guess. That's what you're trying to say, right? Like, it's, it's, a, it's okay to ask questions. Yeah, and, this, yeah. Isn't cons- this isn't like big guitar conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> but this is... Yeah, Medium yeah. Taylor doesn't want you to see. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's cool, but it also saves a ton of wood. We know Taylor is huge on saving wood. Uh, and the sustainability okay. of wood. So, so that is very true, though. Yeah, actually. There is a giant chunk of wood. I wish I had one sitting over here. When you do um, uh, your necks out of a block of wood, and I can get two necks out of a neck blank because I get them out of one piece, but you do. You have a giant chunk of wood that's left over that's I use to make um, uh, uh, tail blocks for mm-hmm. my guitars or sometimes neck blocks. So I'm able to yeah. do a lot of it, but that that's he's hundred percent true there. It is much much more uh it's more sustainable. More sustainable. Yeah. So facts. Yeah. So this allows them to to not have to waste all the wood that they'd have to shape all these necks with if it was I'll one single that. piece. Dude, oh, so you got a yeah. couple couple of good um That's so cool though. pros for, for it being a scarf joint and a two piece neck. Okay, so we're still in the laser room. And this is a really cool part because I just got to hold the horse inlays in my hand. One of my favorite inlays. Why I saw these first at World Cup Guitars. <laughs> when they did the around. Edition, really <laughs> horses line, and it was it blew me away. That's sort of what, when I first fell in love with Taylors. And so what they do here, the laser machines right behind our cameraman. They... I wonder if you learned that at Gallup School of Luthery. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> <It's this gross>. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you and the horse you rode in on, am I right? I wonder if that has a special saddle. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> they cut all these out on the neck, and then these are all cut as well. They have to be laid in there by hand. So this is two pieces of wood right here. So they're all cut on lasers, put that in there, assembled, and, and then... I'm obsessed with this inlay. I would put this on every guitar. Also, you have your flying animals. <laughs> I think that this is a really Some cool way... Birds or geese. What do you have there, There's the, the little... The to be able to mass produce inlays, just here, different than the way that I do it, which is... With hand, the, but the little matching in there, or whatever the piece of art is, producing it pretty gorgeous. Yeah. So that's how Taylor can get all this down to the T, because every little bit of this matters. You know, this might as well be a mile when you're talking about putting a guitar together. So speaking of that, I'm just going to put this right here and watch continue. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. So I'm going to. I'm gonna, how do I back up just a second? Can I do that? Um, yeah, just click on the, the playhead down here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm new to this. Uh, let's pause it right there. Yeah. So, those of you that don't know, Taylor like completely revolutionized and changed the way that guitars are manufactured. They were the very first company, Bob Taylor recognized that CNC machines were becoming a thing, and like CNC machines were basically only used for metalworking. And he saw an opportunity there to like make a more repeatable guitar to make it quicker uh and with less uh room for error like these guitars like have almost no issue so that's why to their benefit and to their uh to the bad side of words uh, <laughs> uh but i always say like a taylor is great but the issue with taylor is they're so uniform and so good sounding across the board well good is relative but i think for twelve hundred dollars it sounds exactly the same as one of their six thousand dollar Taylors, and, the, and and if you do hear a difference, it's very negligible. Like if you really look at a Taylor lineup, like if you start off, uh, it's been a while since I've looked at their lineup, but pretty early on, you end up with solid Sika spruce and solid Indian rosewood back mm-hmm. and sides. Well, if you look at the nine hundred series, the presentation series, it's still solid Sika spruce with solid Indian rosewood back and sides. So like, you're basically buying the same guitar and you're paying more money for inlays. Um, so that's a that's a they're mm-hmm. so perfect carbon copies of one another that they can yeah. be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing in some ways because I feel like you, you almost kind of like, uh, it's just, it could become sterile after a while. But I did want to, to, to pay super huge respects to Bob Taylor's like incredible uh, kicking doors open and, and basically inventing the CNC uh, method for, for guitar building, which well, is it, great. It's, yeah, it's what Henry Ford did for automobiles. It, it's, it, it's, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, I think. And that's how we've gotten to a point where you can get a decent guitar, a real decent guitar. I mean, what was that? The, uh, the Academy 12, right? Yeah. Like, was, that guitar sounded good. Really good. Uh, yeah. We cut that one up, but I was telling Matt, I wouldn't mind owning one of those uh, just as a guitar that I can keep and kick around in my car uh, as a backup or to take on road trips or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a great guitar, and it's $500. Yeah. Like, that's... 
that's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, yeah, I digress. <laughs> I've always been fascinated by that. Somebody sits there all day pressing frets. Yeah. I hate pressing frets. <laughs> So right here, are the, um, sorry, I'm having a little fun here at the Taylor Factory. All these are done in the laser, <laughs> oh, in the we laser room as well. So we, I like these guys. <laughs> they all have to be laid into the guitars, the tops, by hand. So this is That's well, how you get fine degrees this of is perfection. Weird. That's what is I that? call it. Very exciting. I know I keep pausing. So that's crazy to me because what they're doing there is pressing that's in purfling before they've even put the back on the guitar. And that, the the level of accuracy that you need, like, you guys saw me do, if you haven't watched, check out the 3,000 year old Bill video <laughs> series. Uh, but like, when I glue on this back, um, if it's even once, quarter of a millimeter to the left or to the right, if you were to do your purfling in advance, like that's not gonna line up once you cut your binding. Yeah. Because your binding channel is going to need to get cut. Um, I have a hunch on why this works, though. And I'm, well, this is going to give me an opportunity to do a little bit of uh, uh, me bashing on Taylor. Um, because there's there's a secret that's being done here that I've seen on Taylor's for the last few years, and it drives me absolutely nuts. But that's super interesting. You yeah. That right there, that is not typical. That's not typical, what you would see. Like, we're about to, on this guitar, cut the binding channels, and then we're going to be putting all the purfling in. This is a new technique of doing it. I don't think it's for the better. I think it's faster. Well, so I mean, yeah, they are a business at the yeah. end of the day. Now, I will say, like, purfling and, and binding are, are uh, they don't affect tone. Yeah. So there's that. Um, I like to call we'll it. See. Very exciting. Uh, by the way, Guy Fieri's guitar, is that, is that what that is? Exactly. Like, do the flames make it go faster? That's going to Flavor Town. That's where that guitar is going. Yeah. So we are in the rosette room right now where they put all those little cool rosette patterns around the sound holes. They put all that stuff in by hand, all the purfling around the edge of the guitars, all that uh, stuff oh, is put oh, in. Sorry. Uh, you know what? I'm going to stop apologizing. This is my video. I'll do what I want. Yeah. Um, so. So we You'll are in the rosette here. room right now where they put all those little cool rosette patterns around the sound holes. They put all So you're going to see here, all of this is like we did on my other video where that's all Teflon strips in the middle. Cool. So what you're seeing there is the perf thing laid in and she's going to super glue this uh, and then pull that Teflon strip out and then the pearl will go in. Um, uh, Advanced Shell Technology and Zipflex, they have a, a, a deal with Taylor, so they use all Zipflex Advanced Shell Technology. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, good on Kevin Ryan for sealing that deal. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was <laughs> um, a nice tune to bring in. <laughs> and you'll see all of this discoloration around here. What they do a lot of times is they'll, um, you'll actually just wipe it with shellac or, or a lacquer just to seal the wood so that when you do the super glue, it doesn't stain. Sometimes you can get color, colors weeping into the wood finish. So that's what sure. you're seeing there. I think that this is more of that Teflon. Um, she okay. uses, Makes sense. look at that, she's got like, it's like baby powder on her hands just from like freaking doing it all day, just get, uh, yeah. get all blistered up. All that stuff up. in by hand, all the purfling around the edge of the guitars, all that stuff is put in, in this room, which is super cool. Um, they bend it all in here as well. This machine is actually an original uh, from, from Bob's early days when he was bending sides. Yeah, this was for the guitars, not the rosettes. Exactly. Um, and they've repurposed it, which is pretty awesome actually. Cool yeah. piece of history cool. and... and a really cool way to not let something go to waste. Yeah. Um, what I've noticed here too, is everything is done by hand. Like yes. they're putting it on, there's there's people over here putting them in, there's just, there's only about one, two, three, five workstations. And there's like one being active right now, which is pretty exciting. And you're holding what now? This is the Jason Mraz, one of the signature models. Check that out. I, I believe it's what <laughs> Koa and So that's all C and C and laser no. cut. Yeah, that's, so that's right. Yeah. I remember. So all this stuff that's no harder to in this put room. in than just a standard in light or a standard rosette so upstairs here Ooh, that's where the cameras aren't allowed to go that's the secret sauce the bracing room is right behind that scary scaffolding up there but we all know it's the d-class right now x bracing custom d-class all across the line it's all done up there no cameras allowed casino team onward we're gonna, sneak we're gonna have a conversation about v-class bracing <laughs> <and> <laughs> uh <clears throat> We're gonna have a conversation. Not now, 
but it's gonna happen. Yeah. And the fact that like I don't know if how much of that was just for camera, but like to make it like oh we can't show off our bracing. <laughs> We'll later. show you. <laughs> we're gonna show you Taylor's brace. He's skeptical. <laughs> so right now we're getting the tops and backs of the guitars are getting put the on the rims. skeletons as they call yeah. them. And they've invented all the tooling here. These little machines back here too, these so hold cool. them together. Oh, that's they're nice awesome. and tight. And this is all built in-house by Taylor to yeah, make this happen metal. as well. He's got one right there, he's taking it off at the moment. It's a beautiful piece. Looks like a builder's edition. And we saw a lot of Coca Bowl Limiteds. Not a lot, like five of them, but That's they're really, really pretty. It's a lot. Cut. It's a lot. <laughs> so, this is where the guitar becomes a guitar. Yeah. The body. It's where it gets put on top. They got a lot to work to do after this part, though. A lot. A lot. So check it out. Stay tuned. Yeah, there's so much like during a step that you can't automate that. It's just yeah. you have to do this part by hand, which is super cool. Okay, we're in the body department. John, then, what's happening? They the are doing all the binding ceiling. in this room. Cool. And they're doing all the, the cutaways for the armrest. Or it, it's amazing to watch them do it all by hand in here. They're literally scraping the binding. All right, so I'm stopping here for a second because I think that there's irony that a lot of people haven't noticed. It's right here. Um, is So he talks about the Builder's Edition. Yeah. The funny thing is that the Builder's Edition guitar has no binding. And they put a finish on so that guitar that we saw where they were putting the purfling in mm -hmm. is a builder's edition back and so what really annoys me about those guitars is that they'll they there's no they just gluing the basically they take it to this step where there's no binding on the guitar and they're putting purfling on it and then they do a sunburst on the guitar and then they scrape back the purfling to reveal it but the sunburst is then re-scraped off to make it look like there's binding on the guitar, but there's not. It's not binding. It's just covered up with paint. Yeah. And like, so you're skipping one of the most difficult parts of the guitar build, the most time-consuming parts, and you're just putting dark finish on it to cover up. Not shoddy craftsmanship. Good craftsmanship. Yeah. But you're skipping one of the important steps in a high-quality guitar should have, which is binding. Right. So, for the, the we did the Academy Twelve guitar review, which is one of their absolute entry level guitars. Well, for that Builder Series guitar that you're getting, it's basically built exactly the same as the super expensive, yeah, uh, or the super cheap guitar. So these are actually cheaper guitars than the Builder Series, and they have binding. It's because you see how much handwork's required. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just this weird thing that as a guitar builder that I noticed a couple years ago when we went to Nam. Oh, yeah. I was just looking at these like, are you kidding me? Um, a buddy of mine's got a Builder's Edition um, with all Koa, and it's a gorgeous instrument, but there's so many corners that are cut into construction, and it's all hidden. If you get a flashlight and real shine it on that finish, you'll see that there's so much work that got left unfinished on it, yeah. and it's just covered up with dark sunburst. Make it clutch to the body, <laughs> doing all the sanding uh, with these cool little jigs they've got rigged up. Uh, it's it's that can claim. pretty amazing nice. to watch. It is, it is. Amazing is a funny word, but it's, no, it's, it's a lot of handwork. Very dangerous handwork, some of it too. There's lots of sharp, lots of sharp objects, lots of, um, lots of fast moving. I saw, things. I saw some wood fly across, and I was like, it's I should nice. probably put these glasses on, but I didn't want to cover this up. No. But it's, um, this is an amazing section. And seeing guys that, again, carving the armrests by hand, people using different tools to do it too, it's up to their preference. And they're files, getting. Files, orbitals. Files and orbitals. It's not a machine doing it, files and orbitals. Cool yeah, room. Apparently, that, that, that armrest is actually an insert. But they're matching to the binding. Ah, there it is. There it is. Ah. So, <laughs> so much to digest right here. <laughs> okay, so what we're seeing here is the back of, I believe, their Builder's Edition guitars. This is this is done. This is ready for finish at this point, okay? This is their maple guitars now that they're selling that look almost like they're made out of rosewood. They're like a figured rosewood, mm -hmm. right? You, this, you've seen yeah. Steve's guitar, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we played this at Nam. So a couple of cool things that you see here is that whole section there um, where the neck is meeting the body and they have this giant chunk of wood right here, right? That's mm -hmm. basically a massive neck block um, that is now contoured to match the heel of the neck. Um, I get around that by doing a, a Spanish style heel, like yeah. it's shaped different. So that's cool. Notice there's no binding on here and you can see there's that purfling that's mm -hmm. inlaid in it. Mm -hmm. So. Like I said, this is now going to be final sanded, and they're going to put a dark, the tobacco brown finish on this. Right, right. And it's going to cover up all that. Yeah. And so, like, you don't, if you don't really pay attention, because they do a really dark burst there in that cutaway area, so it covers up the fact that that's raw mahogany that's visible now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
and then they scrape back the finish on the purfling and then hide the fact that there's no binding on the guitar. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that any of this affects the sound of the guitar, but I am saying that, like, that doesn't look good right there, right? <laughs> the fact that you can make it look good by covering it up with paint. Yeah. Like, that bothers the expletive out of me. I, 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 I can understand, like, especially, you know, if, if, you, if you admire making guitars as a craft, I, I can I, see just, like, the integrity of that would, I can yes. see how that'd be irksome. And I get I'm, I'm doing... looking at this through a lens, because, uh, you know, like, from a manufacturing standpoint, it's diabolically genius. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, like, it's uh, credit, credit, credit where credit is due, you know, it's, but... It, this is a different animal than what we do as mm -hmm. hand builders, so, like, it's funny, like, I, my hair's on fire. Well, right? and maybe maybe for context for people, too, like, as a... I, I've seen Chris catch flack from some people, and, like, you know, you're, you're subject to a lot of criticism as, as any kind of artist or you put your work out there, and so, you know, people are, are always quick to tell you things that you're doing and to say, well, Taylor does it this way and Taylor is so great Taylor's and Taylor does it, Taylor's the best. And so like, I understand why you have a little bit of a chat on your it. shoulder about that. That's like, cause Taylor's in a context. different game than me. Taylor's doing something completely different. Factory building guitars is completely yeah. different than hand building guitars. They yeah. almost should be this different instruments, but still it's that it's, that's what it is. It's people mm -hmm. that just act like that. The factory made guitar, Taylor Gibson, Martin, I always call them the big three that they, if they, if, if they do it, then it's got to be the right way. Yeah. That is corners cut for days right there. <laughs> and yeah. then Taylor started doing the sunbursts or the, the, the brown stain on the maple, which I think looks really nice. And it's a sustainable sure. wood. Yeah. And that's great. I think I've been saying for years that maple should be more prevalent in guitar building because it's a great wood. I mean, you're, you're a violin player. Oh, like, but maples. yeah. Maple's everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they also, you'll notice that they started pushing the maple right when they started pushing this Builder Series guitar. Mm. And I think there's a reason, because it's a lot cheaper, Maple's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Uh, they're also able to look at all the steps they're able to skip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Because in order to do that really cool technique, a lot of hand builders are doing this technique where they uh, where they contour the side to match a uh, more traditional shaped heel. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of work. Right, right. And I get that it, it would not be economically feasible for Taylor to do that. So it is a really cool workaround. Those two holes, that's their proprietary bolt-on neck thing that, uh, right? Is that what those... That's um, the other thing that I... Uh, like, that, that joint is about. So the neck joint on a Taylor doesn't normally look like that, so I don't... It might get there. Yeah. I'm so glad that they showed this, because before we watched this video, this was, like, the biggest thing that I wanted. I'm like, God, I hope they show what all that looks like. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it all comes out perfect when they, when they do it. I'm going to watch this guy do it over here. Okay, we're in the finished room. So this is one of my favorite rooms. Yeah. And then there's a secret room there's right behind there. Derek. Yeah. That does some more of the finish work with all the UV stuff. But Jonathan, take us away. Tell us about this room. So in this room, they're going to get everything ready sort of for its final coat. So down to, the, you know, if it needs a little more sanding or getting it down it's ready for that final coat of finish. Mm -hmm. There's a room behind us where the guitars actually get sprayed. That's all done by a pretty awesome giant machine for Taylor. One of the big reasons for that is it actually conserves a lot of paint. Yeah. So it's not as wasteful. And then uh, anything that has got that cool shaded edge burst that Taylor does or any of their sunburst finishes, that's all sprayed by edge hand, burst. which is pretty amazing. Um, that is pretty amazing because the consistency level on those bursts, is, it's stunning. So but I don't think they're going to show it, but they have like this yes. giant, they yeah. have like this, you've seen those videos of like the automotive factories where it's like a robotic arm mm -hmm. spraying the instrument. That's what Taylor uses, which is like so cool. And then, yeah. and then what's even, so then it's UV cured. So then it, a big UV light goes around and cures it and then it's done. Like it would spray it. Within like minutes, Wait, the guitar is ready for yeah. buffing, and then another robot grabs this thing and like it goes super fast and moves the body around over a buffing wheel. The buffing wheel is like this big and buffs the whole guitar out. Uh, it's super cool. Yeah, for for context, some of you, uh, if you've watched our videos, maybe you know, but if you don't, or if you're new to guitar building at all, um, it's uh, it, it takes about two weeks to yeah. finish a guitar by hand. Whenever there's no you know UV curing, there's none of that automation process. So it's. It's a big, uh, whenever I first got here and started working with you, that was I was amazed at how time intensive that part of the process yeah. is. The finishing process is always the bottleneck in, yeah. in, in mass production of any sort of woodworking, especially guitar. And they found a way to get like through that. That's The that's big one being using UV cured finishes. Yeah. I think UV cured, I know UV cured finishes are not as good as nitrocellulose lacquers. They're so much better for the environment. They're so much better for your lungs. Yeah. Uh, and so I get it. Yeah. Once again, 
Taylor finishes have a lot to be desired in my opinion, only because when I did repair work, they were constantly having delamination issues. Yeah. Uh, they've gotten so much better over the years. Uh, but this is fascinating to me. There's neighbors who are doing yard work. I don't know if you can pick it up on <laughs> who does who, who does yard work at 11 a.m. on a Friday? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Another note that I noticed was that it's nice how the machines do like the initial just the lacquer part because that's that's dangerous. It is dangerous. It's dangerous. It you know, like, and that's yeah. I mean, a lot of companies are still having their guys do, do that by hand. Maybe you're like, whoa, their little mats. Be yeah. careful. You probably had to do that at Gibson for a bit, but um, <laughs> people did. Gibson I did not. People did. Sure. It was not your people job. But right yeah. now, yeah, we got a beautiful piece right here getting getting wrapped up, ready to go. And um, it's nice to let us sneak in here during Edge a quick burst. break. Still yes, on the shift, so we can get some <laughs> shots and talk about. You can see a lot of those guitars have been sprayed and now they're sanded, ready for more coats. Sneaking out. Oh, oh there it is. Showing. Oh, that's so cool. So look at that. Behind me is what is infamously known in the Taylor Guitar Labs as Buffy the Guitar Slayer. <laughs> so back in the earlier so days, look at those vacuum cups. Sometimes those suction cups yeah. wouldn't quite work. They'd get the guitar, throw it in the air, start buffing it, and that guitar so would become CNC. what I like to call mulch. So or look at the somebody gets home with it. You have a spare guitar. Oh, but anyway, so this cool. whole room, this is the buffing room. So they have all these, these two so giant computers. So this would be so fun These do most of the, the heavy like, lifting for the buffing. That's primarily to save the guys building these guitars the constant back destruction that comes from buffing oh, for hours. Yeah. Then it goes over the gentleman we just were shooting a second ago. He has to hand inspect every guitar that comes off there. So look at that, though. That neck joint is different than what you traditionally would see. And I don't know what level that guitar is. It's a solid Indian rosewood, pretty clearly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the neck joints on Taylor, I don't know if they've changed over the years. But yeah, Matt and I always, like, we, it was a pain in the butt, but it was enjoyable prototyping out the, the, the title casters, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. just coming, making the process work that's repeatable so that you can eventually push a button and you know it's going to work. Mm -hmm. The amount of work that probably got went into making that buffing machine, you heard them, they really could just rip it out of, the, rip yeah. it out of the, the suction cups and smash the guitar into pieces. Yeah. Like, just super cool. He marks them, then he goes and he hand buffs them on these buffing wheels himself. So this is a long process just to get that guitar looking perfect. That's crazy, so that even that, that robot, even it, it makes, it, it still is not a perfect. Yeah. final assembly here at the Taylor Okay, so those are the neck joints I was talking about. Those look yeah. more like a Taylor neck. So that must have just been like a different line, a lower line of guitar. Maybe, yeah. Um, it should have, it's almost like a dovetail. It's a little different for the NT necks. And this is where the neck brothers and sisters get to become a family for the first time ever. So they're gonna check to make sure everything's lined up just right. If it's not, it comes right off and it gets, gets started over. And you have beautiful pieces right here, getting ready to meet their necks soon, it looks like John. It's exciting. It's exciting. It is exciting. It's like a family, you're making a guitar here. Strings go on the guitars, your setups are done. They're gonna check intonation, they're checking everything. And this is pretty much what happens before these guitars go into a case. So that's so one of those edge burst guitars right here again, yeah. off hours a bit, so we can get this little talking done. But so that was the revolutionary thing that Bob brought to the table too, is the NT neck. The fact that there's no glue necessary here. There's two bolts on the end of the heel and a bolt into the fingerboard extension and it moves down the line. And it's fully adjustable. It's, mm -hmm. It was genius. A lot of companies are doing it now, but Bob gets all the credit for that. And that's because of CNC. There was yeah. no way to really do that without CNC machines. Makes sense. It's crazy in here. When everything's rolling, you have people putting guitars together. Very much finesse, though. I'm going to have to stop in a minute so I can play some of these guitars. So I hope you enjoy this. Look around. Keep those comments coming. See what happens. Oh, man. Casino Guitars is wrapping it up. We have seen the entire factory, not just in the U.S., but in Mexico. Yes. So watch that video as well. It's a separate one. Yeah, and we built some custom guitars. We'll have to do another, another one video. of those. Yeah, and might be a, any it's be super and it's a long, it's been a long week, an awesome week. We're here at final inspection. Every guitar that finishes here has to go through this room. They're gonna work it out. If it doesn't get stamp of approval, it's going right back out there. They got a tally board what here. How many guitars have been built for the day? Jeez, and our tally the day. Board's about to go Look at that, how many, like, by the hour. Oh my god. Yeah, they are churning those out. It is 48 guitars between 10 and 11. Yeah. They, they look, they passed their goal. They're ahead of schedule, look at this. Oh, good. Good, good on, on them. them. Yeah. Look, these guys are raised. They earned their beers. Not a single, you <laughs> know, they were, like, they were like, the camera guy's coming quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're right, they're right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, zero days since a work-related accident. <laughs> no, when I was in the Air Force, like, when the commander would come to the shop, he'd be like, <laughs> erasing the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs>
Go check out and get some lunch. Dude, I do. They've got. They finished more guitars. Uh, hell, they finished more guitars in the first, the second hour block of the day than I'll finish all year. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks everyone for watching. Be heard. Be sure to click that subscribe bell. Click your notifications. We've loved walking through the Taylor tour. It's been awesome, Jonathan. Thanks for hanging out, man. Thank you. It's been a fun Super week. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready I'll see if they go into the other room. All right, Serge, take us the food. Get out of here. Uh, so cool. Yeah. What are your thoughts huh. on that? I mean, no, um, I, I definitely uh, I learned a lot. I, I had no idea that that um, the main thing I was impressed with that uh, buffing uh, robot. That's that's pretty cool. I know, and I wish we could have seen the the spraying robots are incredible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, super cool. Yeah, mostly I think this kind of checked some boxes for me. Uh, you know, you feel I, validated. I do. I yeah. don't. Like I said, my dig is not a Taylor. I think that it's just two different animals, and so yeah. it is to, to further the conversation, uh, separating what I do and what other hand builders do from what these guys do because they're just different. Mm -hmm. And whenever it's I do gorgeous. something yeah. one way, so many people will say, "Well, well why doesn't so and so do that?" Well, because like manufacturing technique has to meet the end goal mm -hmm. uh and my end goal is completely different than what taylor's is well th their goal was there you saw it's uh 12 guitars by 10 o'clock yeah you know and your your goal is to make yeah. the best guitar that you can possibly yeah. make and so, we learned yeah. this we learned a lot of this when we do uh it's the launching of the title casters it's mm -hmm. finding that balance between yeah uh you know of repeatability and quality and uh, how much hands-on do we want it to be so yeah super cool um, so I think we'll end it there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope, hopefully you enjoyed this. This was something a little different for a Friday, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go check out Casino Guitars. I know we will. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's a cool channel. I like that. That was nice. Um, and we'll do more of these. Make sure you guys let us know what you thought about the whole thing in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Consider subscribing, liking, if you, if you liked it, you know? And if you like guitar reviews, <laughs> check out our Guitar Breakdown series. Yeah. <laughs> Where we featuring, featuring a tailor, actually. Featuring a tailor. And we'll yeah. see y'all in the next one. Have a good... I guess we can say have a good weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>